Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you very uh, much, Ed. Um, I want to especially thank uh, Dave Zakowski and the Hyundai family um, for the relationship that I've had with them for the past two years. I am truly grateful, uh, and thank you for the great work that you're doing um, here in the state of Alabama and Montgomery in particular, um, and in communities across our nation. Um, let me just say, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, your, your comments were just remarkable. This uh, obviously is not my home. People often ask me, um, what, was I born in Montgomery? And I have to remind them I am the baby. <laughs> I, I'm the youngest. Um, I was born in Atlanta, and I'm a proud citizen of the city of Atlanta. I think it's the greatest city on the face of the earth next to Montgomery. <laughs> um, but in many ways, uh, I, I was born here because of the incredible work uh, that my parents did uh, starting here in Montgomery, Alabama, where it all began. And so I am honored to be home, in a sense, uh, here in Montgomery uh, as we commemorate, uh, celebrate, and, and move forward um, in this important movement uh, that was catapulted uh, from the soils of the state of Alabama. Um, people um, often uh, ask me as well my age, and you know, one of the things that I have to say sometimes that um, I regret is that I can't tell them a lie. Uh, because my daddy just happened to say my four little children in 1963. Um, you know, we have celebrated over the past three years, 50th anniversaries, um, starting with I Have a Dream in the March on Washington, um, the Civil Rights Act, and now the Voting Rights Act. And as I think about all of the work and the sacrifice uh, that has taken place um, in the past, I think about um, three freedoms that we have and continue to fight for, not just uh, in this nation, but all over the world. I think people are crying out uh, for the freedom um, to peacefully coexist, the freedom to prosper in life, and freedom to participate in government. And as we've celebrated these three uh, 50th anniversaries, I believe um, that this one is the most important one uh, because voting rights is the centerpiece um, of our democracy. It opens the door to everything else and makes uh, the freedom to prosper and the freedom to peacefully uh, coexist uh, possible. And so tonight, tonight I am humbled to be in the presence of a lot of greatness in this room. And I want to thank those of you, um, Ms. Boynton, uh, Reverend Jackson, and so many of you um, for the sacrifice that you made for my generation and the generations uh, that we are witnessing now that have emerged into a uh, new generation of leadership and activism. I especially want to thank you uh, for the manner in which you supported the leadership of my father. Uh, we know that he gets a lot of attention and it is not lost on me that his greatness is directly related to the greatness of the people who surrounded him and thought it not robbery to submit their gifts and talents uh, to this movement. And so thank you all uh, very much, Attorney Gray, and, and so many of you. Um, I am just humbly grateful um, that I have the opportunity to know you and to be in your, uh, your midst. As we, uh, um, commemorate, we, we, we commemorate uh, with a sense of urgency um, as we think about uh, the, the way in which the Supreme Court um, has undermined many of uh, the gains that were made as a result of the movement, um, starting uh, with um, affirmative action, uh, the voting rights as we know, um, and now uh, fair housing, um, very troubling. But 
there is hope because something my mother said that I have to often remind people of uh, when they get discouraged, when they don't quite understand why is it that we are still wrestling with uh, certain issues and challenges and, and problems. Why haven't we made more progress? And that is struggle is a never-ending process. Freedom is never really won. You earn it and you win it in every generation. It doesn't matter who you are. We are all born into the freedom struggle. Now, people may personally want to exempt from it or opt out, um, should I say, but none of us is exempt generationally. Um, no matter what your ethnicity, your class, your color, your nationality, anything. We are called into this freedom struggle. And there's not one generation, in fact, who will be able at the end to take credit for the progress of humanity because each generation has to make its contribution to the freedom struggle. And so while we are beset with some of these challenges today, I'm encouraged because uh, I believe that they are going to make that contribution to this freedom struggle. But there needs to be, it has to be, a connection uh, between the generations. And so as we talk about crossing the bridge, we have to make sure we're bridging in this moment so that we're not just coming to a commemoration, but we're truly coming uh, to a new activation because we are desperately in need um, of agitation at this hour in our nation. Uh, we've been lowered to sleep too long, and we've lost too, many, uh, too much ground. And so everybody in this room, um, I'm challenging you to search your heart, your mind, and even your schedule, because we have to find a way to make sure that the sacrifice and the blood that was shed, more importantly, by so many people is not in vain and that we can move forward 50 years knowing that what they secured 50 years ago, that we're going to make sure that it's not disentangled, but it's strengthened, even if it has to be in a new way, as we go forward. And you must find your part in all of this, because we all have a responsibility. Struggle is a never-ending process. Freedom is never really won. You earn it and win it in every generation. God bless you and thank you very much. And I've got to rush off to Selma.